Welcome to the State of Health. I'm your host, Karen Bowling, Cabinet Secretary of the West Virginia Department of Health and Human Resources. In today's show, we're going to take a look at the drug epidemic in West Virginia and what DHHR is doing and what you can do to help combat this growing problem. It's no secret West Virginia has among the highest drug overdose deaths in the nation. It started with prescription painkillers and now is increasingly fueled by heroin. In fact, illegal drug overdoses have created another big problem, skyrocketing rates of hepatitis B and C associated with intravenous drug use. These are viral infections that can cause chronic and acute liver failure. After much planning with community partners, we at DHHR, the Cabell Huntington Health Department, and the City of Huntington announced the launch of the state's first syringe exchange program at a press conference in July. Our state health officer and commissioner of public health, Dr. Raul Gupta, explains why this step is so important. I think the syringe exchange program currently being conducted in the Huntington area is critical uh, to be evaluated as a model for the remainder of the state. It allows us to implement an evidence-based approach that is widely recognized nationally and internationally in an area that is really having uh, issues uh, with substance abuse. Now what it does is it adds to one of the prongs of a multi-pronged strategy in order to combat the issue of substance abuse, especially IV drug abuse. It helps us lower the incidence of diseases and prevent actually uh, the risk of communicable disease outbreak. We're talking about diseases such as hepatitis B, hepatitis C, and HIV. We know that when we do these types of strategies, it allows us to uh, prevent these illnesses in the first place as an outbreak. I think we have a number of opportunities here to learn from what works, what doesn't work, and then be able to offer and be partnered with local communities across the state uh, in order to help those people who are suffering from similar kind of issues and afflictions to help them n at least avoid the spread of disease, spread of outbreaks, as well as get them into the system, a healthcare system where they might be able to uh, get the support, seek the treatment and rehabilitation that is essential part of uh, rehabilitating an individual who's addicted. That was Dr. Raul Gupta, our State Health Officer and Commissioner of the Bureau for Public Health. Joining me now to talk more about what we're doing to combat the drug overdose problem is Vicki Jones, Commissioner of DHHR's Bureau for Behavioral Health and Health Facilities. Hi Vicki, thank Hi. you for, for coming and joining our show today. Uh, Commissioner Jones, um, can you tell us a little about, a bit about the Governor's Advisory Council on Substance Abuse, how it was formed, uh, how long it's been in operation, what are, what are some of the things that uh, this, uh, the group has accomplished? The Governor's Advisory Council on Substance Abuse was created in 2011 by Executive Order 511 by Governor Tomlin. The first meeting that we held was in September of 2011, and we have been meeting regularly ever since then and have made recommendations to the governor and the legislature for improving the um, services and programs that are offered uh, in West Virginia for substance abuse. Now, uh, if you just think about that, that's, uh, you know, uh, for the past almost four years, we've been uh, working uh, with the governor's executive order for the governor's advisory council on substance abuse. Can you tell us a little bit about the benefits that you've seen over the course of the last few years? The benefits that we've seen are really twofold. Um, we have members that are part of the advisory council that are not only dedicated in the efforts, but are also experienced and present a diverse group of individuals that are, enable, are able to provide us with recommendations that can improve the substance abuse epidemic that we're facing in West Virginia, as well as legislative um, and criteria for policies that might be enacted. And these recommendations go before Governor Tomlin, who reviews and then maybe will implement based on um, what is needed throughout the state of West Virginia, and it's based on what other groups might be doing as well. 
Now, I know that there has been a multitude of um, initiatives uh, that have been funded um, by uh, the legislature through uh, Governor uh, Tomlin's recommendations as it relates to the Governor's Advisory Council on Substance Abuse. And uh, I know there would be too many to, to talk about uh, today in our segment, but can you highlight a few of the things that have, uh, you know, things that have been important that we've done uh, that, that have been recommendations from the Governor's Advisory Council on Substance Abuse? The recommendations that came forth um, that have improved our services and programs within West Virginia has been initially to primarily develop a continuum of substance abuse services in West Virginia in six regions of the state. There has been prevention, early intervention, treatment and recovery options that have been made and implemented. And they will include everything from intensive crisis stabilization services to care coordinators or individuals in the communities to help individuals stay in the community to recovery and treatment programs that are offered for individuals to remain in recovery. Most recently, there has been a recommendation and has been solely endorsed um, by Governor Tomlin to develop a call line an outreach and referral center that will provide 24-hour real-time live uh, services for individuals in need of obtaining behavioral health care in West Virginia. Navigating our system has been a challenge for so many individuals and not knowing what is available has been challenging as well. And so this call line will be something that will benefit our consumers or those in need of services uh, and at times can remain anonymous as well uh, to avoid stigma that might be associated with behavioral health but to obtain services um, readily and, and in their county uh, or somewhere close to them uh, for access. Let's talk about that. When you, you mentioned in their county, mm -hmm. I know that we have uh, regional task forces, and I, I think that was a critical piece of this entire uh, legislation is that we, we know West Virginia is uh, diverse. You know, our, yes. our population uh, is, is unique. We have rural, we have more urban areas. Tell me the role of the regional task forces and how they uh, brought in recommendations that are, that are regionally based and why that's so critical in West Virginia. You're right. It, the regional task forces are critical. They were developed uh, by Executive Order 511 as well in 2011, and there were six regions of the state that uh, these regional task forces were created and developed for. The goal of the regional task forces are to make recommendations to the Governor's Advisory Council, which then makes recommendations to the Governor. The regional task forces are so instrumentally important because they bring to the table recommendations of what's really going on in their communities. What may be occurring in the northern part of the state is not necessarily what is needed in the southern part of the state. And so these recommendations are being made from individuals at the grassroots level that can not only make recommendations for overarching statewide initiatives, but also for um, initiatives that are needed in their own respective communities. And that's critical to improving substance abuse services in West Virginia. And I'm glad we talked about that because I think that, you know, this has been a broad-based effort that has been, you know, something that the governor has felt so strongly about. I mean, yes. the governor believes in this. He knows there's an opportunity for us to make changes uh, as it relates to substance abuse in the state of West Virginia and the fact that he's utilizing people from the regions of the state up to the uh, the, the Governor's Advisory Council on uh, Substance Abuse Council and Substance Abuse is so important. So I thank you for sharing that with us today and talking about uh, this very important initiative and, and the work that you and the, and the Governor's Advisory Council on Substance Abuse has done. Thank you very much. When we come back, we're going to find out how the drug epidemic is touching an unlikely profession. Stay with us. <music> 